and Letton. The last archetype we have is uh, these Dragon Link Monster archetype, which I do think is like a pretty cool archetype. Like it started out with rockets, but there's like a lot of like generic dragon, and I say generic dragon, like not just like generic, but there's a lot of generic dragon link monsters out there right now that came out in the in the past like season of cards in the very first season of Reigns. So I get, I guess this is a nice way to like wrap it all up and uh you know bring us into the next season of Yu-Gi-Oh. I guess. So yeah, so if this card is normal or special summon you target one level four large dragon monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand. If you control no link monsters except for the turn, this card was sent to a graveyard, you banish this card and target one dark mo dragon link monster in your graveyard and then special summon it. I do I definitely think this stuff has potential. I just don't know uh, you know, the ins and outs of all these dragon cards that they made, so I don't know how consistent this dragon deck is. But um I mean, <laughs> like I don't know how useful this will be in the deck. Like it seems like a useful card. But, you know, is it really fast enough to earn a slot? That's really what we'd have to figure out. So if this card is sent to Graveyard as Link Material for the Link Summon of a Dark Monster, so it doesn't have to be Dragon, you can spend this card in attack to your zone that Link Monster points to, but it cannot be used as a Link Material. So um, I guess this is more for, like, the Borlode or whatever, because uh, I know Borlode has an effect where you can destroy your own monsters or something. I know one of them do. I, I, I forgot. And if this card is destroyed or banished by the activated effect of a Link Monster, draw one card. Yeah, I know that's the whole Rocket gimmick. I know Rockets um, activate when they're destroyed by, you know, their own effects or even, like, their Link Monster's effects. So, I know he uh, this this guy will work real well in uh, Rockets. And then you get to just draw a card. So, yeah. I mean, it sucks that he can't be used for another Link Summon, but I guess he makes up for it. I don't know. So now we have the Link Monsters of the set, uh, very first being a Link 4 Topologic Gamble Dragon with a uh, Firewall point, Pointing Arrows, two or more effect monsters. And if another monster special to his own, a Link Monster points to, um, while this uh, monster is on the field, discard up to two random cards, minimum one, then your opponent discards the same number of cards. Okay. I mean, uh, the cards being random, I guess, are okay. But... Um, you know, uh, it's it's just like uh, it's like being able to discard cards from your opponent's hand is uh, pretty cool. So if this card is extra linked, extra linked, does that mean it has to have the whole five link? Uh, I, I guess it does. Yeah. So this card is kind of relying on extra link already. Okay. Well, we're already getting cards like that. You can make your opponent discard two cards or their entire hand if less than two. Then if they have no cards um, in their hand, as a result, inflict 3,000 damage to them. So it's kind of just making sure that Extra Link wins you the game. And then if you have no cards in hand, as a result, yeah. Uh, so you only use one top of the guard gamble effect, dragon effect per turn, only once that turn. And so... Yeah, I mean, this is just hey, if you, you if you play a deck that makes extra link real easy, like Nightmares or Goki or whatever, this card is definitely a must-have, or maybe not a must-have, but like if you're extra linking, you should try to win that turn. I mean, I mean, unless you're going first, but um, the thing is, is that uh. If even if you make them drop their whole hand, like you can't activate more than one of these per turn, e even if it didn't have the once per turn clause, um, because you would have to like each each top of logic gamble dragon would have to make your opponent discard um, their entire hand. And so if you're if, if you had a second one, you know again theoretically if it didn't have the once per turn, and um, your opponent didn't have any cards in, in hand, you know it would have to be like they wouldn't take an, an extra three thousand because it would have to be by top of logic gamble's effect. So. Yeah. So next we have Boral Guard Dragon, uh, Link Four again. Definitely some weird Link arrows, not not any we've seen before. Um, at least in you know in, in the combination. Obviously we we have cards with all these Link arrows, but you know in in this combination we we haven't had a card like that. So it cannot be destroyed by card effects. Once returning to someone card from your spawn shop cards onto the graveyard, special one monster from your graveyard that was destroyed and sent there this turn to your field, but it has its effects negated. 
So I guess in Rockets, this is more of a Rocket type card. And then once per turn, um, you can target one monster on the field, change the defense position. Your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to this effect's activation. So it can't even target other Link monsters first off. And then, um, I guess, yeah, just put monster in defense mode. Okay. And your opponent can't change to it. I mean, your uh, freaking Borolo just says, hey, just change to just lose 500 attack. Your opponent can't change to it. <laughs> but, you know, losing 500, you activate that during damage calc. So that's a little different. Uh, yeah, th this is this is a card definitely for uh, for, for Rockets. Um, it's definitely not something for everybody. But, you know, Gamble. Gamble definitely is for everybody. And the very last card of the set, you can say technically, is a Flash Charge Dragon. So this is the very last card we're looking at. And this one, unlike the other two, is actually requiring Dragon Monsters only. But it's a Link 3 that points entirely to the opponent's side. So let's see. You cannot place monsters in the zones this card points to. So you want this guy in the extra monster zone. If you summon it, well, you can't extra link with, with two of him. You can't even extra link it if he's on the board in general. Because, um, you know, to extra link, you would have to have, have a monster facing down. Yeah, so just be careful if, if you use him. Because he seems like a do or die type link monster. Um... But yeah, I mean, like, if, if you can pull them off, I'm sure there are dragon decks that can pull this off easily. Um, you know, you, you just have three zones that your opponent just can't use. And so once per turn, if a monster is normal, especially something to a zone this card points to. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It says you cannot place monsters in the zone this card points to. Okay, so I guess it doesn't apply to your opponent. It doesn't apply to your opponent. Okay, so... For, forget, for, forget what I said. It doesn't apply to your opponent. So once per turn, if a monster is normal summon or special summon to a zone discard points to, you can destroy one monster discard points to if you do inflict 500 damage to your opponent. When a card effect is activated that targets this card, you can trigger one monster and negate the activation. It doesn't say trigger one monster discard points to. I, I really wish it had the whole uh, decode talker effect clause, but it doesn't. Uh, it's swing and a miss. If the first part applied to your opponent, then I would understand why you're playing this, uh, this card. Because this plus like a ground collapse would be pretty cool. But the fact is, is that um, you cannot place cards in the, you cannot place monsters in the card this card points to. If it said players or, you know, monsters cannot be placed in the card this card points to, then it would be better. Especially since it's a link three, like this is, this is bad for a link three. If this were like because you're using three monsters to summon this, and then it like it does nothing for you, it, like everything it does is like a, a small hindrance to your opponent, and then it's like it will be different if you could have like two of these, and then um, you know whatever, and the whole destroying thing is uh, once per turn as well, so it's like, it's, yeah, so it's kind of like, I don't think this card's worth running, like I, I like I saw this card the artwork. It looked cool, and I saw the link arrows. I was like, "Ooh, this this thing is gonna have a spicy effect." Then that that first sentence all, almost got me, but then I was like, "Wait, it only applies to you." So that's pretty sad. So yeah, so uh, that's really all. That's uh, the entire set here of uh, Battles of Legend, or all the new cards from Battles of Legend: Relentless Revenge. Those are all the new cards from uh, Collectors Pack 2018 which comes out in May for the OCG. It comes out May 12th. It actually comes out today. Ooh, the, the day that I'm recording this video, May 12th, uh, this set came out for, for the OCG. But uh, for us, we're not getting this until like mid-June or even late June. I forgot the exact date. I'll, I'll leave it the exact date somewhere. Or I'll, I'll, link, I'll leave a link to something. I don't know. Somewhere. But yeah, this was a niche show here. I'm definitely going to think about making more Yu-Gi-Oh! videos. Uh, I am still waiting for the ban list for the most part. Um, I'm still waiting for Konami to get their stuff together. You know, no sooner than April 2018, man. And if Konami doesn't... And I know, like, they updated the ban list um, to say, like, uh, this ban list is going to apply until the end of the Latin, you know, nationals or whatever, the the Spanish nationals or whatever in, in uh, South America or what have you. 
or in uh, Mexico or whatever. I, I don't even know. But um, yeah, uh, I think that what they should have did is they should have just made made the ban list, right? Just updated the ban list on the site and just say, hey, the old ban list applies to these events. They could have did they, they could have just did that and it would have had the exact same effect, and you know people would trust in the company more, but. Um, doing this whole no sooner than April 2018 thing kind of like makes people lose trust in the company. You know, uh, I do like everybody likes, you know, to know when things are coming out. It's like when a video game doesn't have a release date, but you're still hearing a lot about it. You know, it just gets annoying to the point like, oh my God, when is this game coming out? And it's like, you know, the, the company still doesn't want to make a damn release date for it.